Okay, so today I'm unboxing another part of Gigabyte's updated P55 lineup. So they've kind of renamed some of their older boards. They put an A in the title. And what that stands for is their new 333 onboard acceleration, blah, blah, blah. Basically, USB 3.0, SATA 3 or SATA 6 gigabit per second, and also Power 3X. So what that means is they've upped the power in their USB ports to three times the specification laid out by the governing bodies that specify that sort of thing. And what that means is that even if you plug in three devices to one port, you won't run out of power, like if you're using a hub, like a non-powered hub. Okay, so let's have a look at the accessories included with this board. We've got an IDE cable, uh, four SATA cables, then we have an SLI bridge. It's a flexible SLI bridge. We have a Gigabyte case sticker. Okay. Then we have a Dolby Home Theater sticker. Then we have the IO Shield, nicely color coded for you there. Well, it looks like we got a couple of SATA ports on this board. And there we go. It even labels the USB 3.0 ports, but I'll show you those in a minute. Driver CD, don't use this. Download the latest drivers, the usual deal. Then you've got the manual. This is for the P55A UD4 as well as the UD4P, although I couldn't tell you the difference between those boards off the top of my head. They're Smart 6 user guide, Smart TPM user guide, and multilingual installation guidebook in black and white. Awesome. Okay, so then we take out the mid plate and let's get to the board itself. I mean, the big features of this board versus the older P55 UD4P are obviously the SATA 3 as well as USB 3.0, but those aren't the only features present. So it's quite similar looking to the older board, but let's start with the basics. So here's your CPU socket. Now this is a Lotz uh, hold down here. And those have become more popular because there was a there's a bit of a thing going on with the Foxconn ones that people were complaining that under very high overclocking conditions it might burn out your pins and so there they are adapting to that kind of a change in the market conditions. Here you can see we've got our 12 phase power design. They've upped the ante from the old UD4P which was an 8 phase power design. Here's our little cover on their kind of Aztec looking sort of Northbridge heatsink and then we've got another cool on a couple of chips down here. We've also got our SATA 3.0. Those are the white ports. The other six are just SATA 2.0 ports and those are powered by the Intel chipset. Okay, so last but not least, oh no, we're not even close to the end of this. I'm just kidding. Okay, so here we've got our PCI and PCI Express expansion ports. These two are SLI ready. You can run them at 8x, 8x, PCI Express 2.0, and then let's see what else do we have here. We've got our usual support for up to, excuse me, 8, 16 gigs of DDR3. Then we have our power here. This is our 24 pin, and then our 8 pin power over on the top left of the board. Now let's get around to the back side of the board, the IO shield. So there we have one of those. I love these. These are fantastic. It is a combo USB. Uh, sorry, combo USB. Combo PS2 mouse or keyboard port. Few people are using both PS2 keyboard and mouse, but it's nice to have one port. Then we have a boatload of USB ports. USB 2.0, 2.0, 2 2.0, 2.0, 2.0, 3.0. So these are the fast ones. These are the ones that are running at 5 uh, gigabit per second. 5 gigabit. 5 hundred megabit per second. Wow, I'm not, I'm having a bit of an off. 5 megabit per second. I'm having it five gigabit per second. Off night, folks. Anyway, we got a couple gigabit LAN ports and then a couple eSATA ports, a couple FireWire ports, a couple digital audio ports, and then 7.1 audio ports. And it is late and I'm going to go to bed and thank you for checking out my unboxing of the P55A UD4P. That was painful.